In this video I'll be showing you how to paint the angriest marines on the tabletop, they're even red so they go super fast, they are the brand new corn berserkers. Let's get painting. So to start with I have primed the model with chaos black spray, I then used an airbrush to put Mephiston red spray on, but you can use the Mephiston red can of spray or you can use your brush, it'll just take a little bit longer. So for this first step let's settle in, relax and know that it's going to take a little bit of time, we need to paint all of that brass edging, and the colour we're going to use for that is Rune Lord Brass. Now take your time with this, use the side of the brush where you can and try just to get it on the brass. If you do make any mistakes that's okay, you can just paint over it with Mephiston Red. Now there is a lot of brass edging on these guys so like I said take your time, enjoy this process and by the time you've finished all 10 you'll have a really funky looking set of models. We'll shade all that brass next and we're going to use Agrax Earthshade for this. Now we're going to use this for two things. The first thing we're going to do, of course, is cover all of that brass. The second thing is we're going to use it to recess shade the red armour. So we don't want to throw it onto the armour and make it pool everywhere, but what we do want to do is as we paint that brass, we want to make sure we drop a little bit into the gap between the brass and the red. And this will help you basically kill two birds with one stone. It's a really nice, efficient and effective way of getting all the shading done. Where you haven't got brass, you'll just have to go in and line the Agrax Earthshade, but just take your time. You don't want to put it on too heavily. Once that Agrax Earthshade is completely dry, we'll then take some Canoptec Alloy to highlight all of the brass. So the first thing we want to do is make sure we haven't got too much on our brush. We're then going to use the side of the brush along the shape of the model to get some really nice crisp fine highlights. Where we can't do this, such as on some of the armour trim, we want to look to apply two thin lines of the Canoptec Alloy. One along that edge that meets the red armour and one along the edge of the end of the part. Now we want to take our time with this because it is quite fiddly but just make sure you haven't got too much paint on your brush and only go for those areas which are going to catch the most light. There's no need to highlight every single edge of brass. To add a little bit of age and wear and tear into that trim we'll take a little bit of Nylac Oxide and selectively apply this across different areas of the brass. Now you don't want too much on your brush so make sure that you haven't got much on there at all. And the other place we're going to put this where it's quite prominent is in that World Eater symbol on the left shoulder pad. So just take your time and again be selective and across the 10 models in this squad make sure you apply it in different places to give the effect of age. With that metal done, we'll move on to the silver metallics next. So we're going to base all of these using dark aluminium from Vallejo Model Color. If you haven't got this, that's no problem. You're just looking for a dark silver metallic color, such as lead belcher. That'll work absolutely fine. We're just going to work across the model and paint all of the area silver that we want. If you're not sure, check the box up. There are some really good significant areas, such as the arms on the backpack exhausts. We'll shade all of the silver using null oil. Now we don't want it to pool too much, we just want it to give a darker shade to the area. Make sure that when you're painting it over the change, you really do work it down into the recesses of those links, because it'll really help when we come to highlight them next to make them pop and make sure we've got plenty of contrast in that silver. We'll highlight all of the silver using chrome from Vallejo Model Air, but any bright silver will do, such as Stormho Silver, if that's what you've got. Now, again, very similar to what we did with Canoptec Alloy, make sure you've got a good point on your brush, but not much paint. Where we can, we want to catch those raised edges along the shape of the model. Where we haven't got that, we just want to be very careful and apply it. If you're not sure, such as when we come to things like the chains, then you can just wipe most of that off your brush and just pull it along, leaving the leftover chrome to highlight in a sort of semi-dry brushing technique. We'll move on to the other flatter colours now, and the first one we're going to do is all of the black areas. Now, you can use whatever black you want. I'm using Black Legion Contrast Paint for two reasons. One, the coverage is fantastic, and it's got a really nice opaque finish with just one coat. And two, it's got fantastic flow, so it makes it really easy to guide the brush around some of these detail areas and not actually spill it over bits we've already finished. Like I said, use your favourite black. I'm using Black Legion Contrast Paint, and I'm going to work this over all of the pipes, the tubes, and all of the leather on the model as well. We'll start highlighting that black next, and the first colour we're going to use is a very dark grey called Eshin Grey, and this is just going to make the transition between black to that grey highlight really easy. It's also worth saying that I am going to highlight the leather in different colours, however, you don't have to do that. If you've only got these paints, or you've only got the leather colour paints, then you can use these for this step as well. To highlight that Eshin Grey and give a final finish, we'll take some Dawnstone, which is a much brighter grey, so it's really important that we haven't got too much on our brush. We just want to make sure we've got a little bit and a really Really good point and we'll work around those same areas painting this inside the ashen grey. 
We'll highlight all of that leather next, and the color we'll use to start is one of my favorites. It's Incubi Darkness. So just make sure you've got a good point on your brush, and you can use this to catch those raised edges. You can also use it really as a bit of a, a second base, just leaving the black in the darkest recesses. Now, like I said in the last step, if you haven't got these colors, you can easily get away using the same grays again. I just wanted to use these to add a little bit of variation. The first highlight on all that leather is going to be with Thunderhawk Blue, and this really is going to be the main highlight. We'll add a dot highlight next, but with this, again, as I've said throughout the video, make sure you haven't got too much paint on your brush, and we're just going to use this to catch those raised, sharp edges sculpted into the model. Finally, on the leather, we will take some Fenrisian Grey and we will just use this fairly sparingly along the sharpest creases and those highest light points to really just give us a nice little sharp highlight that's going to stand out nicely against the rest of the black that we've got in that area. As you'd expect for a Disciple of Corn, there are plenty of skulls, bones and teeth scattered across these corn bazooka models so what we'll do is we'll base them using rakarth flesh and this will give us a nice light bone color you can use zandri dust and shabdi bone if you want but i'm going for something a little lighter so i'm just going to make sure i get this over all those areas being very careful around parts i've already finished We'll then shade everything using Agrax Earthshade, and it's really important that we're careful with how we apply this. We don't want to flood too many areas, and we don't want this to pool, especially on those skulls, because it's really difficult to highlight them later on. For those skulls, we'll go back in with Rakar Flesh and just highlight up, focusing on those raised areas, such as the bridge of the nose along the eye sockets, any teeth that we can see on there. We'll just do this on the skulls. We're not going to do this on the teeth or the bones. We'll come back and highlight those next. The final highlight on all these areas is going to be with Pallid Witch Flesh. So this is again nice and simple, not too much on your brush, and just catch those raised edges. So this is really easy when we're highlighting the skulls around the eye sockets, cheekbones. It's also really easy when we're highlighting those bones that are sticking out to the top of the backpack. And as for the teeth that are protruding from the armour, again, just make sure you haven't got too much on your brush, and this will make it really simple. Next up, we'll set the base for the eyes and the plasma coil. So the colour I'm going to use is bold titanium white from Procrill. You can use whatever white you prefer. If you've got white scar, if you've got Corax white, that's absolutely no problem. The only white I found you might not be able to use is the uh, AK Interactive White because that is quite hydrophobic and it doesn't actually work very well with contrast paints. Next up, we'll do the glow effect. So for the eyes, we're using striking scorpion contrast paint and make sure you haven't got too much on your brush. We'll just dot it over that white and you can see straight away you've got a nice glowing green eye. For the plasma coil, we're gonna use frost tart. So again, just paint that frost tart over the white and very simply, you've got a nice bright blue plasma coil effect. The last element we've got to do is that red armor. So the first thing, go around, make sure you haven't made any mistakes. If you have, cover it up with some Mephiston red. Then we're gonna start highlighting. Firstly, using Evil Sun Scarlet, which is a nice bright red. And we're looking to catch all of the edges around the model where we can. If we've got a sharp edge, we'll pull the brush along it to get a nice smooth highlight. Where we haven't got that and we wanna highlight inside the trim of the armor, again, just make sure you've got a good point on your brush and follow the shape of the model. It's really nice easy and straightforward and remember we only need to do the bits that are going to catch the most light next highlight is going to be with wild rider red and again we're looking to paint this inside the evil sun scarlet of the last step so take your time with this make sure you haven't got too much paint on your brush and then you've got a really good point now this is an orangey red which is a little bit desaturated but it will help transition to the brightest highlight that we're going to do next and then once we've done that this corn berserker is done and ready for carnage and the final highlight we're going to do on this model is with Fire Dragon Bright. We want to use this fairly sparingly because we don't want to push the model too far to the orange side. We just want a nice bright red. So what we're looking to do is just catch the sharpest edges of the armor. And we're not going to be pulling this too far along. We're just going to be using it uh, for a little bit. We're going to be adding dots here and there as well, such as in the top of the helmet headdress as well. So work your way around. Again, use it sparingly. It doesn't have to go on every edge. And once we're done, we look at it on the turntable next and there we have it this corn berserker is done ready for the tabletop and ready to cause carnage i really hope you enjoyed the video if you did give it a like check out my other content here such as how to paint the big man angron and i will see you next time